Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guest here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it. We have Rachel Burns on the podcast with us. She's a nationally qualified NPC bikini competitor. She's a mom and a wife, but most importantly, she's coming to us all the way from Tennessee. I think that's the most important part because she has a southern accent, everyone, and we have not had that many people with southern accents on. So everyone, just sit back and enjoy hearing her talk then because we have not heard that much variety when it comes to accents from the South. So again, Rachel Burns, everyone, and Rachel, we cannot thank you enough for coming on. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to do this. Absolutely. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what inspired you and motivated you to make that healthy lifestyle change? So um, basically, in um, right before I had my six-year-old son in 2012, um, I got up to be the heaviest weight I've ever had been in my life. I was 300 pounds uh, when I had my son. So I was never athletic at all before. I don't come from an athletic background at all. Um, never did anything at all. Um, so anyways, I started from ground zero. I had my son. Um, I started about four months after having him. I uh, started going to the YMCA, uh, taking him, and I started with Zumba classes. <laughs> and then it spiraled from there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I started. And he, he was my inspiration for getting healthy. That's awesome. I mean, we, we normally have, you know, so many different stories, but yeah, one of the stories that we normally don't get that much is, you know, just the weight loss after having a kid, but yeah, that's, that's super, super inspiring. But I always love to sort of make the statement that if you were to walk into a gym with a hundred people, there are a hundred different ways as to how those people got into shape, whether it comes down to, you know, their diet, their nutrition, how many reps they do, what exercises they do. There are so many little things that then add up to the final package that people end up seeing that they don't know. And I always like to say, like, if you were to walk up to someone and say, Hey, that body part of yours looks so amazing. What did you train for that? What worked best for them 99% of the time isn't going to work as good for you. Was that a struggle for you at all? Sort of learning what worked best for your body when you were getting started? Um, absolutely. Of course, Zumba and um, Les Mills body pump classes only get you so far. So I said, you know, I'm working so hard um, and it's the nutrition you know, and people usually say, oh, nutrition's 80, 20. I believe nutrition is 90% of it and just learning how to do it. And that starts with hiring a coach, um, hiring the right kind of coach uh, for you because everybody's going to do everything differently. But um, that's where I noticed the biggest change come is when I started weight training. I had never been in a gym, I was always very intimidated to go into the weight room because I had never been in a gym. I didn't know what to do when I walked in there. And um, when I got my first plan, because I've always done everything online through online coaching, I had my husband go with me um, for about the first two weeks until I actually was comfortable enough going in there um, and, and learning how to, and I would literally just pull up the YouTube videos and learn how to do the exercises and kind of taught myself how to do everything. <laughs> that that's awesome. I mean, we have not had also another guest that's self-taught. So that's 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 really really awesome. But when everyone gets started, I mean, they always seem to have, you know, one body part that's naturally just genetically built that they don't have to train as much. And then they always have that one body part that's really lagging behind that they sort of have to train to overdrive. What are those body parts for you? I mean, starting from ground zero, um, I had to to train everything. Uh, I had no you know, probably naturally, I do have very large caps <laughs> and my calf muscles. One of those people. Good God. Pristine. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I have naturally, ca well, I already had caps, but that's about the only thing I did have. <laughs> starting out that's been it <laughs> it's not it's not fair I always say you know I'm 6'3 so for me my back is the one thing that's just naturally genetically good but yeah legs are not my best friend just because I'm that tall and I could do I could always say I could do 10,000 calf raises a day and I could literally inject pure muscle into my calves they wouldn't grow so I see that all the time like we had another girl when I asked that question she put her calf up on the table and she's like oh I have my calves and her calves were like as big as my thighs and I was like okay this is bs I was like we're done here we're done here we're no we're not talking anymore but yeah, I see those people all the time that walk in with just those naturally because calves are really the, that one thing where you just basically have to be born with them. There's nothing that a lot of people can do to really get them. But I mean, there are things that you can do to tone them up. But like when it comes to size wise, it's very, very hard. So, yeah, you are very, very genetically blessed. Then when I'd say that, so I'd say really enjoy it. 
But yeah, I mean, everyone always has those body parts that it's just, that's why I just love just all the different genetics of it. Cause I mean, people have different, bigger body parts than other people and it's just everyone's size is completely, completely different. But what was your nutrition like before you got started in the gym and how did that change? Was it something that happened like night and day where you just changed on or was it a gradual change where you realized like, Hey, if I just go from eating what I'm eating now to just going completely clean, it's probably not going to work out. Was it something that you did gradually? It really was not something I did gradually at all. Um, I always um, ate unhealthy. I mean, um, I grew up I, I, not a very blessed environment. I've probably lived on my own since I've been 16 or 17 years old. Um, I come from a very toxic environment. I basically raised myself. It was raised on spam and bologna sandwiches <laughs> I, and fast food. So uh I really love the structure. I love eating healthy. Um, my first coach gave me a very bro style meal plan, seven foods. Um, and I was kind of just, I never wasn't used to that at all. I kind of just went all in a hundred percent and just ate and just dove right in and ate like it. I really enjoy the structure, uh, kind of growing up how I grew up. Um, and, and uh, switching over to this type of lifestyle. It's, um, it's been really interesting. I just kind of fell into it and I haven't stopped. I'm going on my third year. Yeah. That, and that's totally awesome. And I always love to ask this next question because so many people in, in my generation specifically, I mean, they think that if, you know, if they want something done, it's going to happen immediately and they want it done yesterday. So if they go into the gym, they think, you know, like, oh, I want to look like this and I want it to happen right now where they don't realize it is such a timed process. How long for you did it take before you finally started seeing results? And how long has your journey been before you really started to say like, hey, I should do a bodybuilding show? So um, it was funny. I started with the Zumba classes um, and the Les Mill body pump classes, which is some some type of weightlifting and, you know, boot camp style classes. So I found pole fitness um, and that ca- uh, does give you, depending on like the type of um, classes that you do, it gives you a pretty good bo- upper body conditioning. Um, I mean, I even still so eating like pizza or whatever I wanted three times a week, you know, I still saw some really good results with some more intense body training, body weight training type. And I started um, teaching boot camp classes and stuff from there. So I actually met a girl who competed through that and I had never heard anything about competing at all. Um, so she said, Hey, I think you might be good at this. You should try. Here's my, she gave me the local prep coach here's trainer information. So I, um, I thought about it for about a year. Um, and then I ended up signing up with him and I said, okay, I'll give myself a year, you know, of training with you. Um, so I, I kind of just dove right in, gave it a hundred percent. Um, and I was, I was ready about three months later. <laughs> <laughs> that, to do that, my first show that's uh, amazing yeah yeah so I had a pretty just very drastic fast transformation just uh, going all in and just giving it 110 percent how did you do with that mentally because I know a lot of times especially if you're I mean either like a skinnier person or a heavier person for a, a good majority of your life you sort of identify as that person that's sort of your identity because you're so used to looking at that in the mirror every day was that a was that a weird adjustment for you mentally to just see your body slowly changing and just realize like hey I'm not the person that I used to be physically and mentally was that just a, a weird adjustment for you because you've just been so used to that life for so long uh yes it was shocking um seeing myself go from just a a normal looking person to like just muscular and ripped I'm like I didn't know that I would be able to do this with my body um I was just the th- type of person who thought like uh once you have children you're not able to look like that anymore or uh, you know, like I would you know people just get it in their heads like hey I'll never have a six pack uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm just not that kind of person. But if you if you just go in there and just work the plan and trust the process, you know, it's corny. You know, everybody says that, you know, they say it's corny, but it's true. Like, really, what you can do or cannot do is seriously all in your head. 
One hundred percent. Like the mental, the mental aspect of it is so, so huge. But one of the big myths and stereotypes that I love to bust on this show is that I mean, it's gotten a lot better the last five years with Instagram. But there's still a lot of women that believe that if they touch one weight, they're just gonna hulk out, you know, and put on fifty pounds of muscle overnight. Was that ever a struggle for you when you were getting started out? Did you ever have that fear? And even if you didn't, I mean, you probably hear that all the time. What is your response to that? No, actually, I was never scared to. Um to gain muscle, I guess that was always the goal, you know, like, Oh, I want to see my muscles. Uh, and you know, once you start seeing, uh, the results, you're like, I, I just want to get them bigger and bigger, you know? And, you know, as a woman, you're, you're not able to grow, you know, muscle just like people think. I mean, it, it, it takes years. So and that was never really a fear for me. I, I was always excited to be able to move up in my weights, you know, and progress because that's where the change comes. Oh, one, 100 percent. That's I mean, I always love to tell the story of when I was in college, you know, getting bigger and stronger. And one of my really good friends, she'd always say, like, Ryan, you know, you're going to the gym a lot. I want to go with you, but I'm just afraid that I'm going to get super bulky and I'm going to get super big. And then finally, one night I just told her, I said, look, the amount of weight that you carry in your purse when we go out to clubs, when we go out to eat weighs more than a lot of the dumbbells in the gym. And you're not gaining any muscle from lugging that thing around 24 seven. So, yeah, it's just all about just realizing, I mean, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to get healthy. So that's why I always recommend to people if they're struggling with weight loss or even if they just want to get in better shape, it's like weight, weight training can really do that for you. And just the confidence that it adds on. I mean, just, I mean, I can't imagine what that confidence must've been like for you just to go from where you were to where you are now. I mean, just even for me, I mean, I was never, you know, overweight. I was always like a skinniest twig because, you know, I was just so long and lengthy, but just going from the confidence, like being able to go up and talk to people that you might not have ever been able to talk to. Was that really just a huge change for you too? And just really just a huge shocker for you too, just realizing that all the extra added confidence that came along with this transformation. Absolutely. Like I, I, like I said, I never imagined I would have a six pack. Um, and then just, just following a plan and then seeing your body change and being able to achieve that in just like a couple of months of just training intensely and, and eating the plan, just eating the food like I was supposed to do. And um, it shocked everyone <laughs> around me and myself. You know, I had these crazy like goals. I said, you know, I just came home one day and said, hey, kids, hey, husband, I'm going to do a bikini competition. You and you know, they were like, what? <laughs> but, um, but I was ready in a couple of months and it was actually a really big show. It was the same show my uh, the prep coach was doing. It was the border clash in South Carolina. It's a pretty well-known show. So that was my very first one. Um, but yeah, it was it. I got up there and I was scared to death. Um, my first two shows, uh, I didn't do well at all. It was mainly stage fright. Mm -hmm. Uh, stage presence. Um, but I, I just kept showing up to shows and kept improving. So I'll be doing my fifth one in June. That, so that's awesome. I mean, <laughs> I, I always love to ask, you know, because I always say if you were to pull the general public, I mean, you're going to get a small singular percentage of people that are willing to go up on stage and pose in a bikini. I mean, it might be like one or 2% because it takes so much courage and takes so much determination. And like you said, you had a little bit of stage right before that's, I mean, completely understand. I mean, I'd be shaking like crazy if I ever had to go up and do that. But what are some ways that you sort of use to just even get up on stage? Because I mean, I could imagine at the very end, I might be like, oh yeah, I'm not doing this. Was it just a mental game for you? And how has that evolved? How has it gotten easier for you? Is it just because you've done it? before that you realize that it's not as bad as you might have thought it would be the first time yeah it's really like an adrenaline rush uh going up there um really um before I even signed up with the, the prep coach uh, I had never been to a show I didn't really know much about bodybuilding I wasn't really on social media I kind of just threw myself into the lifestyle I remember showing up to the first like little posing clinic type thing that they did and um uh, I knew I was doing bikini and I was like, okay, I'll pose like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> like I had no idea. And um, anyways, a couple months later, I was just, you know, up on the stage trying to do my bikini posing routine. Um, kind of, I didn't really know what to expect. I never been to show, 
Uh, and that's kind of how my first show went. <laughs> hey, you got to rock the front double buys every once in a while, even if you are a bikini <laughs> competitor. That I, 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 I can imagine the look on their faces. I can yeah. imagine the look on their faces when they're like, nope, wrong division, wrong division. Yeah, yeah they laughed at me. They were like, no, that's not, that's not like your <laughs> So, yeah, so that, that goes into another question that, I mean, I love to ask because there's so many people that don't understand that for a lot of these competitors, posing is the hardest thing. It's harder than the training. It's harder than the nutrition just because it is so much hard work. And I always love to make the comparison of, I mean, you can be a perfect driver, or I mean, you can be a great driver, I should say. You can never be a perfect driver. You can be a great poser. You can never be a perfect poser because it's always ever evolving. It's something that you always need to constantly work on. And we already know that, I mean, you you had a little bit of different mindset of what your posing would be like when you first walked in, but how did that evolve? And was posing, did it come, one of those things that came naturally for you? Is it one thing that you would always just have to constantly maintain and work on? No, not at all. That was the main feedback that I got from my first two shows was I need to improve my posing and um, stage presence. Mm -hmm. So um, after my second show, I I made it my mission um, to improve that as much as I could. So I came in for my third show and I got nationally qualified. So I worked really, really hard as as much as I could um, on uh, on it uh, every day. Uh, every day after my workouts and I I work out six days a week. Um, I made it a point every single day, uh, no matter how busy I was at some point in the day, I I would work on my posing. So yeah, you have to put as much work into the posing as you do into meal prepping and, and working out. It's just, it, you just have to do it. That's one thing that we've heard, you know, all the time. And yeah, because a lot of these compares too, I mean, they sweat more during their posing sessions than they do during their workouts. I mean, it can be very, very tough just, you know, hitting all those poses. And it has to become basically muscle memory where you just have to hit them all at the right time and you just have to know where your angles are. I mean, it's it's a very, very difficult thing that doesn't really get talked about that much because most people just don't realize how difficult it is. But I always love to ask what your first prep was like because I, I always love to make the comparison where just getting into shape and just, you know, like for you, just losing that weight and getting into shape where you could go on a prep takes so much hard work and dedication and determination and just meals on time, you know, doing all your workouts. But going on prep is notching things up to a whole different level when it comes to, you know, you have to get your workouts done. You have to eat sometimes even at a certain time. You have to eat all your right foods. You cannot really mess up at all. Otherwise, it can derail everything. What was that process like for you and what was that experience like? Honestly, I just didn't uh, know what I was signing up for. And I was just like, okay, I'll just follow the plan. And I kind of just went along and I just assumed that that's how everyone did it. (laughs) I didn't realize, you know, like, you know, oh, this is hard. (laughs) You know, and it just became my lifestyle and it just became like a habit for me. So, I mean, I, I don't know. And I, I've started it and I'm just going into my third year. Yeah, I mean, that's just because, again, a lot of people just don't realize how, you know, intense it can get, you know, just having all of your meals and just, yeah, if there's one thing that I love to do with this, just shine a light on that because it's so, so huge that not, and not that many people talk about it, but also, I love to ask this question for the females that we have on, so the the high heels that they made you wear, was that a struggle at all, learning to walk in those heels on the stage? Because, I mean, we've had, my second health and fitness guest was the tallest ever bikini competitor to ever compete. She was 6'3", so she was like 6'8". Ah. She was like 6'8 in those heels, so that, that was hard enough in and of itself, but did you have a lot of experience walking in heels before, or was it one of those things where you, you really had to learn how to do that with your posing and, and whatnot? Yeah, same with posing, um, and I tell everybody, because a lot of girls ask me, like, how do you learn how to walk in heels, um, and I said, if you can vacuum and sweep and mop your floors in the heels, then you'll be fine, so that's what I do, I put my shoes on, like, just when I'm meal prepping, when I'm cleaning the house, um, you know, you wear them every single day until you get used to it. And you know, it's, it's natural for you. Just like walking in sneakers. We hear that all the time. It's like, you got to do it when you're vacuuming. You got to do it with any other things. Yeah. Just make it, you know, so that it's second nature for you. But my favorite question to ask, you know, all the guests that I have on the show, whether they be up and coming bands or our fitness people or any of the professors that we have on is for my bands, I always love to ask, you know, what is that feeling like being on stage and performing live in front of people? And that also applies to our health and fitness bodybuilders. What is that feeling like for you? I mean, when you finally get to step on stage, you know, show off all of that hard work, once you get past all the nerves, what is that feeling like? For me, it's like, I feel so powerful and uh, empowered. Mm-hmm. 
when I'm on stage, um, just going from, you know, like 300 pounds to like being on stage and being able to win, uh, win the shows against other amazing women. A lot of them who probably not had half the struggles that I have. Uh, it's just like a very cool feeling, the best feeling in the world. Uh, I'm just blessed to be able to do this. I always say, just find that one thing in life that makes you feel like that, that makes you just feel so alive and so full of joy. I mean, for me, it was pitching in baseball, but you know, this podcast now has sort of taken that over now for me now that I've found some. But if you find that, I mean, that's one of the best things that you can do in life. So that's my number one piece of advice to everyone out there. But now we get to one of my fun questions that I love to ask. What is your go-to post-show meal? Always a cheeseburger and fries. That's always my favorite meal. <laughs> any, any particular place that you love to go to? Absolutely. There is this place um, at local to me where I live in Franklin, Tennessee. It's called Grounds, and they have the best uh, cheeseburgers and fries. Yeah, that's a, I always say if I ever competed, I would go to like a Five Guys and just, you know, load yeah. up on hamburgers 100, 100%. But now, one of the things that isn't talked about really at all that I love to talk about, it's probably the most important question that I have on here is that, I'll give an example. So I was at a New Year's Eve party and one of my friends came up to me and said, hey, Ryan, you know, I really, really enjoy your show. I love what you're doing. He also lifts weights too, but he also didn't, wasn't aware. But he goes, I always thought that a lot of these bodybuilders, you know, look that way 365 days out of the year, what they did when they were on stage. And a lot of people don't realize that you guys have manipulated your body through all the dieting and through all the weight training into a look that is not sustainable. You're not going to be able to look that lean and shredded year round. And you are going to have to put on weight. So what? how was that first off for you when you first found that out? Was that a rough adjustment for you? And how have you sort of, you know, mentally adapted to that fact? Because a lot of people that we have come on, you know, they get anxious or they get depressed just knowing that, you know, all this hard work that I've done, I will have to put on weight though, regardless. Has that been a struggle at all for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The What they call it, the post-show blues is definitely a thing. And especially for women, for the bikini competitors, um, going from very, very lean and, you know, you go for months and you're trying to lose and tighten and tighten and then you just see see it go in reverse very quickly, much quickly, more quickly than, you know, the prep. So it, it is. It's definitely a thing. And, um you know, um, I, I, I had like the worst eating after my first show, you know, probably a lot of competitors do. And I, my hands and my feet swelled up. <laughs> um, so I learned from that. I was like, okay, I'll never do that again. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely happens. But also I think it's better with the, the right coaching. I think the, maybe the less well, for me, cause I know everyone's different and has their own style, but Probably the less restrictive you are during your preps and um, maybe the longer preps that you take, the easier it is. I've heard that, you know, all that a lot of the people that we have on say the same thing that get a coach too, because a lot of these stories that we've had on are people that don't have coaches, then just experience that themselves and they end up put on like 40 to 50 pounds within like two or three weeks after they're done. And it's just, it's eye opening. but yeah, it, it's one of those things. So what do you do? Do you reverse diet or what are, what do you do after a show? Um, so the coach, the, the, the strict coach that I did have, um, I don't think he really did reverse dieting. He kind of just, um, it was a very bro style meal plans. Oh, so yeah. I've learned over time that doesn't work for me. Um, I, I work with a coach now who does reverse dieting and who doesn't do cardio. So, uh, I'm enjoying that very much. I'm just enjoying lifting weights cause that's my favorite part of the prep is the weightlifting god not doing cardio is probably the best thing because yeah if there's one it, thing it, i hate doing cardio too so yeah the, hearing that you know just just puts a smile on my face but now for everyone out there i mean we mentioned it before she's also a mom and a wife but i mean i always love to say you know being a mom that's a full-time job in and of itself how are you able to juggle the fact you know of having a kid and still being able to find that you time to go to the gym and maintain the lifestyle so I have a very supportive husband. <laughs> My husband is amazing. Um, he is totally uh, just so supportive of all my goals. Um, so, of course, he helps. My kids um, are supportive. I have a 12-year-old daughter, and um, she goes to the gym with me and does my workouts with me when I have her. The gyms here, they have the daycare. So, of course, that helps. Uh, they're able to, to be in the daycare while I work out. Um, and they've adjusted 
to this lifestyle. I've gotten them into working out. My husband works out all the time now. Um, and it's kind of our routine around here. Everybody's uh, fit. A fit family. <laughs> and, and that's awesome. Cause I was going to say, you know, how important is that for you though, too, to also, you know, portray that really healthy image? Because like I said, a lot of the things that we, when we have our, our specialists that come on and talk about, you know, like weight loss and how like sometimes the obesity crisis is, is getting worse and worse. And they always say, you know, if you have fit parents, that's one of the best things that can happen to, to guarantee that your kid grows up with a healthy lifestyle. So yeah, it's really important that there's more people like you though, too, that do include their kids, you know, in some of their workouts and just, you know, and not like push them in that direction but just you know give them suggestions just say like hey you can do this if you want and it's just yeah I, I mean so i can't thank you enough for that just i mean doing your part because a lot of people more people i think need to be getting into that but now two of my favorite questions that i absolutely love to ask every guest that i have on the show health and fitness wise is when i started going to the gym and you know getting bigger and stronger one of the negative things the one negative thing i should say that i really experienced is that you're gonna get asked to move a lot of people's furniture you're gonna get <laughs> asked to open a lot of pickle jars I mean, I'm still home with my parents for the next couple of months, so every time they come home with groceries, I basically have to lift the car into the driveway. Has that been a similar experience with you where people just look at you and they just assume that you can do favors like that for them? <laughs> no, maybe it's because I'm a bikini competitor, but I am one of those people uh, you know, who go grocery shopping and who have to take all the bags in one trip. Mm -hmm. And my husband's like, uh, why don't you let me help you? And I'm like, no, I can get all the bags. <laughs> I can carry all the bags myself. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, we hear so many answers like that, too, because like for me, I mean, just being that tall as I am, you know, you're going to get asked regardless. I could have zero muscle and then they'd be like, oh, hey, tall guy, come over here and help. So I like last summer was horrible because every other weekend a friend would text me and be like, hey, I'm moving on my parents. house. you want to come help me move my chair, my couch? So it got to the point where I just said, hey, as long as it's after my workout, because I'm not going to get tired moving your furniture so that I won't be able to work out. But I, you do kind of appreciate, you know, that people do recognize, you know, that you do work out. So, yeah. I mean, it is nice. But again, you know, that's just one of those things that just comes with the territory when you're working out a lot. You people just some people just assume that you got to do some favors for them. But now, prop, my, I mean, my all time favorite question out of all the ones that I will ask you is, and again, before I ask it, it's a multi million dollar idea for anyone out there. But when it comes to clothes for fit women, your clothing options can be limited. I always love to say, you know, like if you have big shoulders, dresses aren't your best friend. Jeans are another thing that we hear of all the time where they're just a disaster because you're supposed to, I mean, but most of our competitors have, you know, big thighs, big lower bodies, and small waists, okay. and jeans are not built like that. What are some ways that you sort of found to compensate for the fact that your clothing options can be limited? Okay, so when I'm very lean, uh, right before shows, um, I wear my 12-year-old daughter's pants. <laughs> I have to wear kids' clothing. <laughs> so um, I don't wear jeans. Um, I might have one pair uh, that I've put on twice since starting uh, prep three years ago. <laughs> so I have to wear gym clothes all the time and leggings. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of those things we get that answer a lot too, where I just guess, but I mean, yeah, if someone were to come up with like, you know, like a, a business suit or like any, anything or dresses that work, I mean, definitely, definitely let us know because I have so many guests that would be, excuse me, that would be willing to do that because it, it is a huge thing that is not talked about as much, but yeah, clothing is, you know, one of those things that it, it, it can be a big struggle for a lot of the people that we have on. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And also, what are your kids? So, I mean, what are your kids personally thinking about, you know, having a mom that's really strong and that lifts? Do they really enjoy it? Or is it one of those things where they, because I mean, just to realize that I know their mom looks a little bit different than most of the other moms. How do they react to that? <laughs> so um, I might embarrass my daughter sometimes because we get a lot. Um, oh, that's your mom. And I, I thought she was your sister. <laughs> And I love that, but, um, I don't think she likes it. And, um, she, she's just getting into the working out. Um, sometimes she does not want to work out. I make her go anyways. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday morning we get up, I make her go work out with me and, um, I video shame her cause I post all my workouts, uh, usually to my Instagram stories. So I'm like, okay, hey, this is going on Instagram. I'm videoing you. <laughs> and oh, that's, that's I, evil and that's pure try, evil right there <laughs> she'll try, she'll try to, to get little tiny weights she she wants to use five pound weights and I say nope you go get that 20 pound weight pick up the 15 pound weight you can do that and, and I make her do it yeah. 
<laughs> and I, mean, I said, you'll thank me when you're older. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, because we have so many different different ways that people, you know, involve their kids. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, just, just waking them up on Saturday, I mean – yeah, there. I mean, that's that's got to be. I mean, I'm not an early morning person, but yeah, good. I mean, best of luck to her daughter out there. You know, getting up every Saturday and working out. But yeah, it, I mean, it is something that I mean, you, she will definitely thank you for later on in life. But I mean, one of the reasons why I love to have you know muscular women and men on the show. I mean, I have a little bit more women just because they're easy to talk to about you know their journeys and whatnot. Because with guys, it's literally this conversation. So how much do you bench? And then they give me the answer. That's that's like really the only thing that guys talk about when it comes to it just feels weird talking <laughs> yeah. to guys about that. But I love having the women on because just we human beings are just naturally just fascinated by things that we don't see too often. So when people see a muscular woman like walking down the street or doing anything, we tend to just stare because like 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 I said, we, we don't see that normally. So it just becomes like fascinating. We're like, oh, what? What? Like, I've never seen that before. So a lot of the times people aren't able to look past the muscle and realize that, you know, like there's a human being deep down behind that. They just look at the body and they just say like, oh, wow, that, that's, that, that becomes their entire focus. So I love having guests come on, you know, like share their journeys because it really proves to everyone. I mean, it's like they're just human beings just like you and me. They just may work out more than more than a lot of the people and they may, you know, look bigger than a lot of the people, but they're just normal people. So, I mean, yeah, again, I mean, that's why, you know, I love having our guests come on. But now we go to our audience favorite, my personal favorite part of the podcast, where I'm going to ask Rachel here about a dozen or so fun questions and more of a getting to know her. So we'll see how she stacks up to all the other guests that we've had on. So for our first question, what is your go-to workout song at the moment? My go-to workout song, I'm into, um, I guess, you know what, Little Wayne, uh, G-E-Z, uh, I like uh, gangster rap. <laughs> You know, when I'm trying to go really hard, it's really good to zone out uh, to listen to rap music. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that's a good one, too. I mean, I'm more of an old school where I got to have my 80s music. I got to have, you know, my yeah. my cre cheesy 80s. I mean, I'm only 24, but I, I enjoy the crap out of that. But And then I'll have, yeah. like, cheesy, like, movie soundtracks, like Rocky IV soundtrack, which is the cheesiest one of all time that I'll, that I'll blast. But And then on my leg days, which I know are just a living hell for me, you know, I got to crank up the, you know, the, the metal music and, you know, like, the Metallica. But I have a problem. So I have a gym at home, luckily. So I work out, you know, 75% of the time at home. But when I do go to a normal gym, I wait for the beat to drop before I do stuff. So let's say I'm doing, like, a lat pull down. I'll be sitting there sometimes like this for, like, 30 seconds. And I've had people come up to me and be like, Hey, are you all right? Did you like pull out your back or something like that? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm just waiting for the beat to drop. So I am known throughout my gym as the guy that waits for the beat to drop. So that's, that is, you know, I mean, it's, I do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's proven that if you get more into it, I mean, you can get more out of your workout. So I do that, you know, I do that a lot. But now, out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could train with any celebrity, who would it be? So um, my celebrities, like when you say celebrity, I think of like my fitness celebrities. Oh, you and can I do that. Yeah. Say, yeah, I would say it's a tie between Ashley Kaltwasser and Frida Paulson. <laughs> They're my the top bikini celebrity people. Yeah, we're going to have actually Ashley Kaltwasser on in I think a week and a half, I think she's coming on. So I'll yes. definitely let you know when that one gets done because, yeah, she's 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 awesome. So, yeah, and I mean, I'm, I was one of the only people that knows because I, I took German in high school. So I know that that's Coldwater in German is her last name. Yeah. So Ashley Coldwater. So that's, you know, that's, that's a funny name. But, yeah, I mean, for me, it would probably be like Arnold or something like that just because, you know, it's Arnold. But now what is one thing that you would change about the sport of bodybuilding if you had the all-knowing power to do so? One thing I would change, um, maybe, um, the, maybe it has to do with the judging criteria. I know because it, I know with bikini, it's so subjective and you really never know, um, showing up what the judges are looking for. Um, they could be looking for different looks like harder, softer, tighter, fuller. Um, and it's kind of different for almost every judge mm -hmm. so maybe more specific judging criteria for bikini that's one thing that we hear you know all the time and i couldn't agree more because there's so many times in stories that i've heard where the judges just don't there's a lot of human error in it too just like a lot of sports so that's one thing that i really think should be adjusted as well but what is one item that you always need to have in your fridge <laughs> um one item um i always have in my fridge is peanut butter <laughs> <laughs> the regular or the non-fat um i don't even know what non-fat peanut butter 
is. Well, we, believe me, we've had people like, on here who have done like, yeah, I got my I got my non fat or no fat like peanut butter, and I was like, okay, first of all, that doesn't even sound like it would taste any bit good. We've had yeah. that answer before, so yeah. So you guys, you guys have like the regular Jiffy. I do um, like the all natural oh. kind. You know, you have to keep in the fridge and like stir. Yep. Um, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, peanut butter is like my favorite food ever, yeah. um, and I couldn't survive without it. We've had that answer <laughs> plenty of times. So yeah, peanut butter. And I'm just I, I write down all these, so then I can make a list. So and then when I reach a certain number of podcasts, I'll just unleash and I'll just unleash the list, and I'll be like, okay, here's the most popular answer for each each thing. So yeah, okay. peanut butter, peanut butter, asparagus. Is on asparagus. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, second would be asparagus. We, honestly, we've heard that answer twice, and you're going to be like close to our hundredth health and fitness guest. So that is, I mean, it's, I mean, it's on the board. So you know, asparagus, everyone. But I mean, yeah. one of the, the most surprising answers that I've actually got for that is mustard, because I never realized that because a lot of bodybuilders it has zero fat and zero calories, so they put that yeah. on their chicken just to make get yeah. some flavor. And I always say, you know, if, if you have to do that, you might want to reevaluate your life if you're having if you're having yeah. to put mustard on your chicken just to make it taste good. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's one thing that it's one thing that they do. But what is one <laughs> thing that people who follow you on Instagram would be surprised to know about you if they met you in person? Um, a lot of people are surprised that um. Of that um of my age, I guess I'm almost thirty. I guess I look a lot younger, um, a bit like especially when I get leaner closer to shows. I don't know. I'm always told that I look younger, and I always get asked if I'm my daughter's yep. sister. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I can. Yeah, I can definitely say that. I say, yeah, you do look. I mean, and again, everyone. That's one of the benefits of you know working out and having a healthy lifestyle is that we've had people on here that are fifty that look like they're thirty five. So it's. I mean, it's. It's. It's insane what what that can do for the body. So and again, I mean, I can't recommend that enough. But now we got to go on to some probably the best. My three most important questions that I'll ask on the question here. What was the last TV show that you binge watched? Uh, my husband and I are super into Outlander on stars. Uh, that's our favorite show. That's probably like the only thing I really watch on, on TV. That's we look forward to that every Sunday night. That, yeah, that's awesome. I've watched a little bit of it and yeah, it's a really good show. So I recommend that to everyone, but what is your favorite TV show of all time? My favorite TV show, um, of all time, probably weeds. Yes. <laughs> I really liked that. That is the first weeds that we've had on. So everyone, okay. yeah, weeds is on the board. So yeah, I mean, usually we get like a Friends or The Office or stuff like that, which are my my yeah. personally two favorite. But yeah, it's always nice to have our variety on here. But what is your guilty pleasure movie? What is a guilty pleasure movie that you enjoy watching? Guilty pleasure movie. Um, that's a hard one for me. Um, I just don't watch a lot of movies. Um, every now and then I'll turn like a Netflix on. Uh, and watch, um, <laughs> I'm stuck on it. No worries. A pleasure movie. No, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you mine then. So everyone yeah. close your ears. All my guy friends, you never heard this from me, but princess, Bri <laughs> princess bride is mine. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I've memorized almost all the lines. I mean, whenever that movie comes on, I stop what I'm doing and I go and give it a listen. I mean, I'll give an example. So I was typing my thesis paper in college and that came on and I stopped doing my thesis paper and watch it. And if that isn't dedication, I mean, I don't know what is where, I mean, I, I love that movie. It's my ultimate like date night movie, but yeah, princess bride for sure is my, is my guilty pleasure movie. But what is your favorite fashion trend of all time and least favorite fashion trend of all time? So uh, my favorite fashion trend of all time would have to be crop tops. Yep. I was so excited the very first time I was able to wear a crop top. <laughs> That's the best feeling ever. Uh, least favorite um, is probably uh, parachute pants. <laughs> I, I, I thought of that. <laughs> I, I completely forgot about those, and I agree those are really bad. But for me, I mean, my, my favorite, especially in this time of the year up in Minnesota, it's got to be flannel just because it's so warm on you, and it, it yes. makes the cold a little more bearable. But my least favorite has got to be, I mean, my dad ruined these in the late 90s. He wore one fanny packs. Fanny packs, yes, that's a good one. Well, it, here's the thing: I always, I always make the correction. So girls can pull off fanny packs 100, percent but guys trying to rock fanny packs, it's like, no, you have to stop. And I know so many guys are trying to do that right now, or they're trying to make a little bit of a comeback in the fanny pack. So you know, if this podcast can do one thing, I mean, we can hopefully stop the scourge of fanny packs and you know, make the world well for guys at least and make the world a better place. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, 
it's just one, it's, so that's one of my pet peeves. But for one of our final questions, we have two more left in the questionnaire, but for our second to last one, if you could go back in time and talk to the 18 year old version of yourself, what would be the best piece of advice you would give her? Um, I would give her, um, you need to learn how to count your macros and lift weights <laughs> and start young. Learn how to do that stuff as young as possible because that's something that will carry you through life, you know, and you'll just have a much better, you know, feel much better about yourself, be healthier. Uh, everybody needs to know how to do those two things. And it gets harder with age, too, to make that change. So if you can get it, you know, as young as possible, 100%. I mean, me, I was a huge people pleaser. So just realizing, you know, that, like, you can't please everyone. Not everyone's going to dig your vibe. So, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the things. But now for our final question, if you had never gotten into weight training, if you had never gotten to adapting the healthy and fit lifestyle, where do you think you'd be at in life? What do you think you'd be doing? I would be, like, just lost. Mm -hmm. I would be wandering around kind of like almost in a depressed state. I feel like that's what fitness has done for me. It's like giving me an outlet. It's been like my therapy. Like I go to the gym, it's my therapy. I feel so good after. Um, I look forward to getting up every day and working out and just feeling good about myself. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what it's done for me. I'm, I'm just totally addicted to the whole lifestyle and the journey. Mm -hmm. I like to add one question at the end of every questionnaire that's different. So for this one, if you could train any body part for the rest of your life and never have to train anything else, what would it be? <laughs> well, it needs to be glutes, mm -hmm. but it, my most favorite is shoulders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shoulders, shoulders are a fun one for me. I mean, anything upper body for me is, yeah. is you know, an easy day for me. I mean, and, and abs too, just because, you know, I do abs almost every day except yeah. when I'm, you know except when I'm not in the gym so yeah it's gotten easy but yeah anything with legs yeah I mean if I could just you know just snap my fingers and you know double my leg size you know I would be happy with you know never doing a squat or anything like that ever ever again because yeah it's <laughs> it's it's a struggle especially for the tall guys but now we're done with our questionnaire so now I always like to ask do you have any shows coming up in the future do you have anything planned or is it one of those things where you're just you're just waiting to see no, absolutely. I've got um, shows planned. My first one is going to be um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's Battle on the River. Um, so I'm hoping to take my first overall there this year. Fingers crossed for that. And um, I hope to get nationally qualified again with that show and uh, compete my first nationals mm -hmm. uh, this year. So I'm excited to uh, hopefully make it to Vegas. From there in July at the USA Championships and then the Miami Nationals in November. So that's my plan. Yeah, and again, we, we wish her nothing but the best. And I always am fascinated by, you know, when we have people from the South on because, and like when we have people that, you know, actually are from the South where, you know, they have the accent and everything. I've always wondered because when people think of the South, there's always that stereotype that, you know, it's all, there's so <laughs> many fatty foods down there. I mean, everything's like, everything's, you know, super, you know, dry or it's, you know, buttered up and it's just, you know, fried like crazy. Has that been harder for you to sort of adapt to a healthy lifestyle and maintain it knowing that a lot of the culture is based on, you know, a lot of buttered up, a lot of fatty foods? It is because that's like um, that's what the staples here, you know, and that's a, like how a lot of people eat mm -hmm. in, in the South. So, um, I mean, even I went to the supermarket the other day and bought some salmon from the meat counter and he was they were like, oh, are you from here? <laughs> <laughs> I says, yes, uh, but I probably don't eat like a lot of people from the South. <laughs> and that was, you know, what I, I answered him back with. He said, yes. Yeah. So that's, it's true. Yeah. I, yeah. So again, I mean, that's even more dedication right there. So that's even a better story. And lastly, I mean, before we wrap things up here, is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? Absolutely. My, um, my sponsors mm -hmm. and my, my coach. Uh, so I candy bikinis, um, uh, so the competition bikini, um, anyways, they're amazing. Um, I'm their sponsored athlete. They, they're the best. Love them. And also my coach that I have now, Ryan, with Unique Performance Gym. They're out of Arizona. They're, they've been amazing. So I'm excited to see what we can do this year. And um, a nutrition factory. It's a, our local supplement company here. Um, and I'm a newly sponsored athlete with them as well. So, yes, I'm excited 
that that's awesome. And again, everyone go and give Rachel a follow. I'll leave a link to her Instagram down below. And again, you know, she's just so inspirational and that was just a great story. And we really appreciate having her on and just following her. I mean, and seeing, you know, her workout videos or her pics. I mean, it'll inspire you to get off the couch and stop eating those Twinkies and, you know, go to the gym <laughs> and adapt a more healthy and fit lifestyle. So again, you guys go and give her a follow. I'll leave all the links down below. And thank you for coming on, Rachel. You couldn't have been a better guest. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.